Last week on Hoops Academy. Okay, so I want to see some sense of urgency get down and play. If you want to play the rest of the quarter. If you don't, I'll put five new guys in. I want you to uh, meet one of our alumni who has got a national championship ring. He led the nation in scoring, Jason Conley. Jason was my name is Joshua Keith Harrison. I attend Duke University. I chose Duke for a lot of reasons. When I talked to Coach for the first time, you know, he told me that he wanted me to play here. Just, I knew right then that this is where I was going to be. Montrose Christian is more than a name. It represents a legacy of winning. Of hard work. Of sacrifice. Of values. It's eight NBA players, two national championships. It's about being the best on the court and off. As 2011 begins, the first semester of school is coming to an end, and players have to balance their schoolwork with their basketball schedule. Coach, is anything? Yeah, real quick, you guys got exams next week, all right? So make sure you're on top of them. We play tomorrow night, we play Saturday night. We play late Saturday night. So not only get some studying done because you're getting out of here a little early, but make sure you're getting food and you're getting rest. Okay, and then the coaches will go over schedule uh, for Saturday tomorrow, all right? But think about tonight. Good rest, good study, good food, and start to get ready for this, for everything. The phrase student athlete is an integral part of life at Montrose Christian. Education is one of the things that I take tremendous pride in at Montrose because I see other schools out there um, that I look at more as basketball schools or, or some people call, you know, turn them basketball factories. When I'm out recruiting, I try to make sure that the recruits and the parents understand that we value education just as much as we do basketball and that it's not just about coming here to become a better basketball player, it's about becoming a better student and being ready academically for college. All our kids go to college. It's a college preparatory school. And over 90% of our players in my 34 years, over 90% have gone off and graduated from college. And I think that's a, that's a record that I'm most proud of, is the fact that these guys are not only going off and being great basketball players, but they can use basketball to get that education. I just wanted to give you some statistics. All right, this is your, the chances of making it. The chances of making it. High school athletes, there's 549,000 high school athletes, okay? High school seniors, 157,000. NCAA student athletes, 15,700. NCAA freshman roster positions are only 4,500. NCAA student athletes drafted, because you've got some international students and all that, 44. You know, think about the percentages here. Uh, percent of high school players to the NCAA. High school players to the NCAA, 2.9%. Okay. Uh, percent of NCAA players that go pro, 1.3 percent as an as a athlete. Okay, the percentage of high school players that go professionally, see who that number is? Three-tenths of one percent, right? Three-tenths of one percent. The percentages are not with you to play in the NBA, okay? It's not, it's not there. What you do in the classroom, okay, is going to end up being much more important to you than anything you do on the court. At Montrose, the basketball program is a part of the school as a whole, rather than a separate entity. But Montrose Christian School is that first and foremost. It is a Christian school. We really do believe that we can have an excellent educational and academic institution that represents the best of the Christian tradition throughout the centuries. And that we can produce student scholars who are also athletes. 
That's Montrose Christian to me. Uh, it's the institution more than it's the basketball team or the program. When I talk about pursuing excellence, the, the institution pursues excellence. Ultimately, that's what it's supposed to be all about, right? Uh, because if it was just X's and O's and it was just, you know, how many wins and losses we have, I can tell you, I wouldn't be here. The connection between basketball and education is best exemplified by Coach Billy Vernon, an AP history teacher at the school. His love for basketball and love for history is probably about the same, so he's not one of those teachers who just teaches so they can coach. He really knows what he's talking about, and that's what I like about him. So. Teaching's always been a, a passion of mine. Both of my parents were teachers, so teaching's always kind of been in my family and in my blood. He's always been passionate about history, and I wanted to be able to use my knowledge and passion for history and be able to teach it to other to students. That's one of the things I, I really like about teaching here is I have a lot of players in my class and I can kind of show them a different side of me because I want them to understand that they need to have balance in their life. You have to have other aspects to you and other interests and just be an informed person in society. Coach Vernon joined our faculty and staff last year and he has been a, a godsend to our school. He is a dynamic teacher been great in the classroom. He really engages the students. Uh, they respond to him very well. He's, he's met and exceeded our, our every expectation. As the semester grades return, seven of Montrose's 11 players have made the honor roll. We are educators, so we expect nothing less from our, from our basketball players. They have to excel. They have to meet requirements in the, in the classroom. They, they're not treated any differently than any, any other student. They have to meet the same expectations. Uh, many of them are in honor rolls, dean's list, uh, headmaster's list, so they've, they have excelled in the classroom. Montrose opens the new year 7-0 and and faces several tough games in the D.C. area before it turns its attention to its first nationally ranked opponent, Arlington Country Day of Jacksonville, Florida. After defeating St. Stephen's, Montrose faces back-to-back -back games against Freedom of Woodbridge and Coolidge. Says get off, put the doubt in their mind right from the beginning. Let's go. Get the tap and let's, let's go. go, baby. Let's go. Right now. Let's, let's go. go. Right now. Let's go. Here, Montrose. Montrose. Montrose handles Freedom easily as center Michael Carrera leads all scores with 25 points. Against Coolidge in a showcase game at Trinity University in Washington, D.C. The team comes out sluggish and the first half is marked by sloppy play. Vetter is in the please. If you guys would just settle down and run what we practice, okay? Tyrone, you have to get the mentality of running the offense. Running the offense, not being the offense all the time. Okay, you're not the first option when, we're, when you're a point guard. What we have to do is quit being so anxious. You were too anxious, you, were, you hit your shots, but the last couple shots you took, it was like you, the ball was hot, you had to get rid of it. And the first couple minutes, you guys were all over the place as opposed to being playing against the other team. You were playing against Montrose. Montrose controls the second half, again paced by Carrera to win 72 to 40. The following week, Montrose plays an uninspiring game against Chapelgate Christian in the DC Game of the Week. Tyler Hubbard knocks down five threes to lead Montrose. One of the revelations on this year's team has been newcomer Cedric Blossom. Moved into the starting lineup to add more size inside, he prides himself on doing the dirty work to help the team win. He's the guy who kind of does the dirty work. He will get the loose balls. He would go get a second attempts. Uh, he really kind of holds his team together in a lot of ways. He's one of those kids that knows his role. You know, he knows he's not the guy that should be getting all the shots, but he's fine with that. And you know, every good team needs players like that. He leads by example. Um, gets on the floor, loose balls, you know, does all the little things that coaches love. While only a junior, Cedric is considered the old man of the team. On the court, he definitely works hard. He keeps the team like a father of the team, sort of keeps the team together. Cedric is like the wise guy of our team. Uh, Tyrone calls him corny all the time. Well, we all call him corny all the time because of his little jokes. Sometimes he'll do little things like, fix his eyebrows, or make sure his hair is all right, and 
and he's just he's just a different type of guy. He's also earned the nickname of Preacher and often leads the team in prayer. Cedric, why don't you lead us in prayer? Everybody bow your heads. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you once again for letting us have an injury free game. Thank you for letting us play to our potential. Pray that we come back um, next week ready to work hard so we can um, get this one on Tuesday. And then we can Amen. Amen. Sacrifice is a pillar of life as an athlete at Montrose, and Cedric is no exception. Okay, he yeah. and teammate okay. Donnell Diggs face a daunting commute to and from school to attend Montrose. My commute begins with getting up every morning around 4.45, 5 o'clock, and I have to go into work with my father. I wake up at 5.30. I take a 30-minute train ride here and a 15-minute bus ride every morning. I typically get home at about 9 o'clock every night. It's, it's a lot, but it's going to be worth it, I know. Donnell Diggs is a junior and has risen through the ranks at Montrose. I came to Montrose because I knew it was going to prepare me for when I get to college. And I knew I was going to be playing against a lot of great players and I was going to receive a great education. Donnell Diggs is Montrose Christian. He's what this program is really all about. He does everything he's asked of on the court to the best of his ability and he does everything with character. You know, he's always one of those kids you can always depend on for doing the right things and, you know, being there for everybody. After rolling through their next two opponents, Montrose is now 12-0 and heads to Morgantown, West Virginia for a top 10 showdown against 17-0 Arlington Country Day in the primetime shootout. Arlington Country Day is a much larger team than Montrose, boasting four guys at six foot nine or taller. You know, our schedule came out this year. People obviously pointed to four teams that were considered elite in high school basketball. You had Arlington Country Day, you had Oak Hill, uh, you had Finley Prep, and then you had St. Benedict's. Uh, Arlington Country Day was our first big test. And we knew it was going to be a tough matchup for us. They had the talent to beat us on any given night. Yeah, they're definitely bigger than us. I mean, they had a height advantage, 1 through 11. I looked at the players, told myself that they're not bigger than me. I'm the same size as them and just played ball. This is all about being mentally ready now, okay? These guys, they're good, we're good. It's going to be a battle, okay? You got to get yourself ready for a battle, okay? And it's going to be some give and take. We're not going to go out there and just run over top of them. They ain't going to come out there and run over top of us, okay? They are big. We're going to have to block out. Okay, we're gonna have to, I don't care if a guy's 6'11", if you block him out and get your hands up, you're gonna get the rebound. If you don't block him out, 6'11", guys won't get the rebound. Okay, so we gotta understand that. So we gotta do the mental things, the little things that win games. Now we gotta have intensity, everybody. Come intensity on, on the Come bench, on, everybody. Okay, we got some people that came all the way down here to see us. Okay, we wanna make sure they have a good yes, ride sir. back. Yes, but we gotta go out and play. Yes, sir. Lay it on the line. Yes, sir. Stay on the line. Yes, sir. Right now, we are. March on. Arlington Country Day is undefeated and playing with confidence. From the opening tip, they jump all over Montrose. Led by Maryland native Jordan Goodman, Arlington builds a 19-4 lead. You're all in slow motion. He drove the length of the floor and laid it up. You haven't sprinted the rim yet, so don't, you know, you're not going to get the ball unless you sprint the rim. Okay, we went up the first time and guys acted, the guys at the post didn't react. Okay, we drove the wing and you didn't scream. Okay, now we got to get it together, you got to sprint back. Defensively, we're in 22. We were doing everything we could to get back and stop them in transition D, but they got real high early. Keep working, keep working, block out! Arlington is hitting from the outside, draining seven first half threes while shooting over the smaller Montrose defenders. Okay, now they hit seven threes, okay? But they're wide open because you're not transitioning back. You're just going, you're just trotting like you're tired in the first quarter. Right now, one basket at a time. Right now, we are. Marshall. Vetter brings Carmelo Bentoncourt into the game. With his steadying influence at the point guard spot, Montrose begins to claw their way back. They cut down on turnovers and even create a few of their own, leading to easy baskets. 
In the second quarter, Montrose has whittled the lead down to two points, 28 to 26. When Arlington goes on an 11-0 run to pull ahead 39-26, Montrose responds with a small run of their own to close the score to 39-33 at the half. We can come back, okay? So we, we're, only, we're only six points down, okay? Okay, we have to execute though. We can't give up the easy baskets. We can't let them have the tip, uh, tip ins, and we gotta get a hand up on the threes, okay? And everybody's gotta sacrifice. If it's a loose ball, we gotta get the loose ball. Okay, we got to get the loose ball. It can't be rolling around. We got to have it. It's got to be ours automatically. Okay, that makes it, that makes everybody else play that much harder, Coach. It's our ball coming out. Remember what Coach said? It's going to be games of runs. This is a perfect example of what he said in the shoot around. It's a game of runs. They went on a run. We came on a run. They went on a little one. We just went on one. Okay, it's a game of runs. Keep yourself even keeled right now. Okay, even. Okay, you guys are in good shape. Everybody ready? Yes, sir. First four minutes now. Let's go, baby. Most important four minutes we've had this season right here. Yes, sir. The first four right now. Right now. We are. Montrose. Montrose picks up the intensity and wins the first four minutes of the third quarter, narrowing the lead to three. Despite giving up more than four inches to the man guarding him, Michael Carrera has been forced inside. He pounds the glass on both ends of the floor. His three-point play ties the game at 42. There we go. Gotta work! Arlington responds with two quick buckets before Tyler brings Montrose back within one. At the buzzer, Carrera banks in a shot to knock the score after three. Okay, now, it's a tie game, okay? We've worked for these all year long. That means every possession is vital, okay? We don't have to rush anything. What they wanted us to do in the 1-3-1, they want us to come down and take a bad shot. Okay, execute right now, execute right here. Come in, right now, right now. We are, Montrose! Come on, Tyrone, let's go! In the fourth, Cedric Blossom gives Montrose their first lead of the game. Carmelo's driving layup, then puts Montrose up four. However, with five minutes to go in the game, Justin Anderson fouls out. I never fouled out in a high school game before, and um, it felt different to be out of the game so early. You know, being on the bench and, and having to make sure that I stayed into the game, I, I think I sat down a total of three times because I was up the whole game just cheering on my teammates. I, I, was, I was their biggest fan. Arlington has one more run left in them, though able to narrow the lead. With just over a minute to go, Jordan Goodman hits a game-time three-pointer. Montrose looks to take the last shot, but Tyrone turns the ball over, giving Arlington Country Day one final chance to win it in regulation. Okay, we got to get a stop. We have no timeouts left, so if they score, Get it in the court and go. Get a shot at the at the end, all right? We want to get a stop. If we get the ball, we're going to overtime. We're in better shape than they are. We're going 24 left from the sideline. Guy on the ball, get all the way back. Right, do you know what I'm talking about? Okay, okay, 24 left. If we can get a steal, we'll score. So we're playing to win, not to lose. Right now, come on. You want to put Michael on 22 right now? One possession. That's fine, yeah, that's fine, yeah. Switch with Michael! Switch with Michael! Switch! Montrose moves Carrera onto Goodman, hoping Michael's length will bother Goodman's shot. Stay tough! Let's go, the plan let's go, works, let's go. and the game heads to overtime. We got, we got, we're in good enough shape to win this game, okay? But you gotta dig down deep. It's gotta be deep right now. Okay, right now, get the jump ball, get the jump ball, and then go four out, getting the ball inside to Michael, or a penetration to the basket, one or the other. Right now, we are! Montrose! In overtime, Arlington Country Day draws first blood, but Tyrone has an answer. Goodman's block leads to a breakaway, and Arlington can take the lead. 
Cedric hauls in the board, and Montrose holds on for the last shot. We have to score on this possession, okay? Now, if we don't get the immediate score, take your time, okay? And, and we can run it down for the last shot, okay? We're going to double overtime if we have to. Hey, let's, go, let's, let's go. win this game, Let's right? go. Let's win this game, let's right go, now. Boy. We are, Montrose! Tyrone Johnson penetrates inside, and the ref calls a foul with .5 left on the clock. The foul, yes! The main thing I was saying to myself, if I make these two free throws, we get to go back with a W. This is why he's here at Montrose, and I knew he could step up and hit those free throws, and, uh, and that's what big time players do. They knock the free throws down to seal the game. My thing was just to uh, do the same thing I do in practice, just concentrate on the rim and make the free throws, and I did. Carmelo deflects the inbound pass, and Montrose emerges with a two-point win. A true testament to this team's character after being down by 15. When you're down 18 to 2, you can go one of two ways. Okay, you can just fold it in the rest of the game, or you can fight back and get it back in small increments. And that's what we did. Next week on Hoops Academy. The Oak Hill rivalry is uh, its one of those type of things where it wouldn't matter what our record was and what their record was, it would still be the biggest game of the year to both of us. But the intensity before those games and going into those games, it just it's at a different level. Our basketball game from the start. Sir, is go. everybody ready? Yes, sir. Right now! Let's go! We are Marshall! <laughs> Thank you.